All right, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Erin Maney. I serve as the Manager of Community Engagement and Communications for the State University System of New York. Uh, we are in partnership with SUNY's FACT 2 Task Group on Open Pedagogy and SUNY's Conference on Instructional Technology this week to welcome you to Open Education Week and our series of webinars. If you could, please type in the chat. Let us know where you're tuning in from. We'd like to get a sense of who our audience is, as these have been um, promoted uh, nationally on other websites. So it'd be great to see where you're from. Erin, can you hear me? This is Todd Coral. I can. I'm so sorry I, to interrupt, but no, we're having fine. a little technical issue. I verified with Tom Capuano. Apparently, the Zoom link from the email is identical to the one on the SUNY site, but we uh -huh. can't get in. We have to go to the um, list of events at mm -hmm. bit.ly, and okay. when we click the same URL there, I'm able to get into the meeting. So okay. I just want you to be aware that, that some people may be having trouble, and Tom is troubleshooting it as we speak. OK, I, I appreciate that. Up. Sorry to interrupt. That's oh, OK. <laughs> Hey, Sherry. Hey, all. Learn Thank you for letting me know that. That's good to know. Uh, I didn't have those reports this morning, but that could be, I'm not sure why, but I can take a look at that while Sherry's presenting, too. So uh, in, in the interest of introducing our speaker, this is uh, Sherry Shibangu, and she's joined us from Monroe Community College. Sherry is a professor in the Business Administration Department, and I'm proud to say a 2019 Open SUNY Online Teaching Ambassador. On behalf of the SUNY Community of Practice, I just want to thank you for joining us and sharing what you know about open education resources. And Sherry, I'll turn this over to you. Okay, and then you say you are recording the session for... This uh, is being recorded and I will put the link in the chat for everyone to be able to access that at the end. Okay, that sounds great. And you want me to share, we'll try to share the... Yeah. Uh, you know what, I'll just have you go on and share uh, okay. advance the slides. No problem. So good afternoon, everyone. Once again, I'm Sherry Chibangu at Monroe Community College in Rochester, New York. And I am just so happy to have this opportunity uh, to share with you what I call my OER uh, journey. Uh, I teach in the business department and I teach a number of business courses, uh, introduction to business, uh, a, a introductory uh, management course, um, what else, entrepreneurial studies, and I love them all. Erin, um, the next slide, please. So for the time that we have today, what I'd like to do is again, just share with you uh, my journey with OER, some of the goals that I've set for the session today, share with you my advantages, the advantages and disadvantages as I see them. I'd like to offer up what I consider a basic uh, roadmap for someone looking to get started with OER, um, share with you uh, where you can find uh, information and just learn more about uh, the Open Educational Resource uh, Initiative. There are places where you can get uh, help. And so um, I'll share the, um, the names of those who are very instrumental at the SUNY level. And then finally, I just have a, a slide at the end, which will uh, capture just some highlights around the uh, licensing, licensing associated with OER. All right, Erin, next slide. So in terms of, of my journey, and I, and I don't think that this is unique to, uh, to me, but every semester uh, I have students who are not able to pay for their textbook at the outset of the semester. Um, it's, it's a barrier. Uh, I've known it for many years, and sometimes students don't get their material until a month or so into the semester, and I don't need to tell you how that can impact their ability to be successful in our classes. So I had that in the back of my head. Um, and then I learned about an initiative with the state of New York uh, and SUNY, and they actually were offering grants for faculty 
to get involved in the OER initiative. So I found out about it in 2016 and I said, voila, why not? Here's an opportunity for me to assist my students and I'm gonna get a few uh, dollars uh, with, it, uh, with that as well. So in 2016, I just drove right in uh, to the process and started uh, looking, for, uh, looking for material. Where we are today at SUNY as it relates to OER is not what it was, is not what it was like when I started. And so again, hopefully I can give you some, uh, some tips. But I just sort of dived in and I was all over the place. Uh, but ultimately I ended up adopting a, uh, a textbook called Principles of Management that was offered by uh, Lumen, Lumen Learning. Um, and I would say about 75% of the material uh, actually, and it's a, it was a textbook by the way, uh, covered the, uh, the course learning outcomes that was set for the, um, the introductory business course. Uh, it had supplemental materials, meaning PowerPoints, a test bank, and also uh, some videos. And so it goes without saying that I needed to uh, supplement uh, what I what I ended up um, supplement the material with the te the, the uh, management textbook. Um, so it was finally uh, implemented in my online uh, introductory management course in the fall of 2017, and then it was expanded to my seated uh, class, same class but seated class in the spring of uh, spring of 2018. Aaron, next slide. And so um, just to continue, I'd like to just share with you that I do not consider myself an expert uh, in OER. Uh, my presentation to, is based on what I learned through the process and what I know now. And so if you were to ask me, what are my goals? It's simple. I would hope to um, encourage other faculty mem members to get involved in the OER initiative, and then simply to share what I've learned through my process and what I know now with those that um, um, are considering it. And so you learn from my journey and make it easy. Okay, again, here's what, here's what I saw in terms of the advantages and the disadvantages. The advantage clearly my textbook for my introductory supervision class went from $200 to around $20. To me, that's a big deal. Um, even though I was told that we as faculty have the opportunity to review the course content, I truly found that to be true. And so uh, we don't have to accept anything that doesn't work for us or doesn't meet our standards. So I see that as an, an advantage that we evaluate the content. We can arrange the content in the order that we see uh, fit. I did uh, just a little bit of that. I took a few chapters out and I think I moved just a few, but I learned that. Uh, again, the, uh, I, I use Lumen Learning and it was so easy for my uh, tech folks to integrate it, integrate it with, with Blackboard. And I see that as an advantage. I also learned through this process that the information could be available in digital form as well as um, a hard print. The first time around, I did both. I actually had the, the textbook, textbook printed and it was also available on day one for my students in Blackboard in digital form, and that's a textbook. Next slide, Erin, and I hope I'm not talking too fast. No, you're doing uh, great. The, uh, again, through this process, I learned that if you wanted to enhance the uh, printed material with color, it's available. Uh, there is support at the, if, let me speak for MCC. We have, support for those who are looking to uh, develop OER. I understand that much better than I did three, three years ago. And so um, I see that as a big advantage. The level of support that we have at the, at the SUNY level 
is again, it's at another level. And so to me, that's another reason for you to get involved because it's not, you're not going to be doing it uh, uh, alone. Uh, what else might I share with you? The, um, uh, the Lumens, Lumen Learning actually had, has a tool called Waymaker. That was a big plus for me. Waymaker is a, I would say that it's a co courseware that allows uh, uh, me to track, not only track my students, but it has automatic, automated messaging where I can uh, give a shout out to students who are uh, performing well, but also to nudge students who are not doing well. And you can set that up. But I don't want to get too far off, um, off uh, course here. But just know that that ended up being a big plus that I fully didn't uh, understand until a whole year into OER. And, and might I also say, I hope that you will investigate whether or not there's still uh, stipends available. I do know that MCC will be offering them, according to Michelle Beachy, and again, one of our support folks here at MCC. Um, so it, advantages, those are all the advantages. Disadvantages. It goes without saying that you're going to need to spend time reviewing the material. And so hopefully the stipend will kind of offset the time that you're going to invest in that. Um, if you elect to uh, go with a printed, ma printed material and you want color, it is available, but it's going to add to the cost of the textbook. Another a disadvantage, I equate it to when we adopt new textbooks. Sometimes you have to get adjusted to the new material. For example, the principles of management book, the way that some of the concepts were presented were different than the way that uh, the approach that I normally use for them. And so I had to get used to that. Um, in my journey, I found that there were some uh, 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 textbooks and courses that had supplemental materials and others did not. Uh, I ended up selecting one that had a supplemental materials. Okay, I hope again I'm not going too fast. Let's keep it rolling. So this slide, I would say, is how I would recommend that you get started knowing what I know now. I would say take a moment and investigate what resources you have on your campus and how they can and, uh, support you. On my campus, Tom Capilano, uh, Michelle Beachy, and Katie Gadu. Wonderful team supporting the efforts. So if you start with that, find out if there are any stipends that's going to be offered, that would be step one. Um, Number two, SUNY has developed what I call a community course to help anyone getting started with OER. And on my next slide, I'll show you what some of that content, content looks like. That was not available uh, when I started uh, my journey in 2016. So knowing what's available on your campus, um, going through the community course is where I would recommend that you start. The third point would be to sit down with your course learning outcomes. We have course learning outcomes for all of our, our classes. Um, and so if you understand what the outcomes uh, uh, you expect for your students, you can use that information to start aligning it with uh, material that you're going to evaluate. Uh, again, another recommendation I would have is to establish a criteria around um, what percentage of the course learning outcomes you would want from, for example, a textbook that was already ready on st um, uh, in stock and available through some of the sources like Lumen um, or OpenStack. Um, I knew that I did not want material that was um, more than a few years old. And so uh, what's the criteria for you? If you teach math, 
may not make a difference, but with my teaching management, it was very important that I have material that was pretty much uh, up to date. Um, supplemental material, how important is that to you? So I think, again, knowing uh, about resources, uh, taking advantage of that uh, SUNY community course, sitting down with your learning outcomes, establishing where, uh, what your parameters are, is a good way to start. Um, for SUNY, to be considered OER, the new standard is 51%. When I started, I believe it was at about 74%. So you might find a, a textbook that meets a, 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 the SUNY standard. And again, you can just supplement that with other material. But I think that that's an important number uh, 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 to know. And so from there, start looking uh, at uh, uh, course material. I'm going to recommend that you start with material that's already off the shelf. And I'll be uh, sharing some of that information with you in the next few slides. Keep this in mind. Just like no textbook is perfect, I think that that is true when we're evaluating um, uh, 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 courses or textbooks that have already been put in place. I don't think that there's ever been a textbook that was so perfect I didn't need to supplement it. And so keep that in mind as you go through uh, looking for, for material for uh, OER. Oh, okay. Next slide. Um, I won't spend a lot of time on this, but as I said earlier, SUNY has developed um, a community course, and what you see in front of you are the topics that they will uh, cover in uh, uh, this presentation, and you can actually just click on that link, and it'll be available uh, available to you. Next slide. So in terms of where to find material, um, I highly, highly recommend that you visit the SUNY website to see what OER material they've already adopted. Again, this is uh, a relatively new, it was not fully available when I started. Uh, contact uh, Lumen Learnings, uh, 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 um, go to their website and see if there is a textbook already available. OpenStax is another uh, resource you can search by, by subject. Where else might you go? Um, the OASIS uh, search a tool, that, that Tool, I would put it in the category of a search engine. Geneseo is leading that e effort. And you can go in and, sh and, and uh, again, uh, search by topic. You can search by lesson plans. A lot of material out there. Take advantage of it. And then the next one that I have listed there uh, is uh, oercommons.org. And you can read for yourself there some of the material that you would find at that um, uh, at that. Um, that website. Okay, what else? Some additional resources available to you. When I went through the training and I needed to integrate my material, not only uh, did I have help from uh, Tom Capilano and a few other folks on my campus, uh, but Lumen, I had sessions with Lumen and they also guided me through the process. And I, I really do think that that is still um, uh, available. Um, other places you can check for material, of course, uh, is uh, YouTube. You can go in, uh, and look, uh, search by topic, look for um, the uh, the guide there for filters, and then search on CC, which is of course your Creative Commons. I like visuals, um, and I use those. I didn't use them so much in the textbook, but I use them in my online course. Uh, and so uh, there are places that you can go for photo and images, uh, uh, Unsplash or Pixabay. Again, great sources if you want images or visuals. Um, many of you probably know about SUNY uh, Workplace. 
I like to think of SUNY Workplace as um, uh, Facebook for the entire SUNY system with an educational component. And so you can literally uh, sign up, open an account there, and they have all kinds of specialty groups. And one of those specialty groups happens to be SUNY OER. And so there you can find out uh, about conference, conferences around um, OER, uh, uh, their topics that are uh, covered in the new, news related to OER, and a whole host of uh, information. And so again, I offer that up in terms of a way to um, uh, to keep informed around OER material and initiatives. Next and, slide. And Sherry, I would just uh, mention that since that is SUNY only, I do have a link to all of our um, events that are OER, and I'll put that link in the chat, and that is a public link. So okay. this link here is private for SUNY, but I'll post the public link. Okay, all right, thank you so much. Okay, so um, what you have listed here are the um, SUNY uh, support uh, staff, uh, Michael Daly, Mark uh, McBride. Uh, there's also um, a help desk where you can actually send information, ask uh, questions related to uh, OER. Uh, next slide. Okay, so um, uh, the last slide or two, I think I only have one or two more slides, right? Erin, I think I only have one or two slides, but the um, uh, Creative Commons, when you start this journey with OER, you're going to find that there's language around um, OER, for example, CC meaning uh, Creative Commons, um, and under that license, for example, there is a, a, a basically it just says that you can use, you can uh, uh, remix, you can distribute, basically you can do anything that you need to do with the material um, and you don't need a license. The, um, uh, and then there are other uh, licenses that say, would say something like, hey, you can use it, but give credit to the author or it may say something like, you can use it, but not for resale. And so, Erin, if you go to the next slide, um, I found this particular video helpful to me in understanding uh, OER uh, uh, licensing. And so, again, I just uh, uh, offer that up for you to, to consider that. So if I were to just uh, take a minute uh, to, to summarize, what I would say is uh, please consider OER. Why? Because it's a big savings uh, to our students. And I can tell you, uh, students having the textbook, textbook or the material available to them on day one makes a big difference. We're removing a barrier for our students uh, you may find that there's a site available to offset the cost that you're going to, uh, uh, the time you're going to invest in, in searching for material. Uh, I would also, again, highly recommend that you look at adopting material that's already been in, put in place instead of uh, starting from scratch. And this is one of the reasons I named this session a basic roadmap uh, to, to OER. You know, starting from scratch, certainly you can do that, uh, but uh, there's, again, so much more material uh, uh, available to us uh, as we um, embrace OER. There's a whole nother dimension to where you can publish and whatnot. I'm not at that level yet, um, but just get try it. And there's, and there's, there's one last point. There folks available to assist you, so you will not be doing it alone. Aaron, I am done. And those are just some of the symbols there, but I'm done. And I'll do my best to entertain any questions that one might have. Thank you, Sherry. Now, we, I, you know, whenever I listen to you about this, I really appreciate the honesty of our instructors with 
you know, the lessons that they learned and how it is a journey and you continuously learn. And the great thing about sharing all of these things is that we learn from each other, right? And Absolutely. Um, and we can share those materials that we create or the approaches that we did to um, incorporating this sort of thing in our courses. And even if it's someone that's not the same discipline as you, you could still learn from how they went about it and the approach. So I appreciate that. I um, just, I just, just, I just dove right in, started doing all of these <laughs> searches and you know, you have, uh, 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 I think it's uh, the Florida system, Michigan, mm -hmm. and I think uh, Illinois, a uh, number of the colleges and universities have material available. I, I really say that that's a last resort. Otherwise, well, again, I'm only speaking from my experience. Starting from scratch is just, I think it's just too much. And so my next frontier now is to build on uh, what I have uh, now because, you know, I can manage that. And now I can, uh, again, go out and search and then search on the, I know how to search on the, the right licensing uh, agreements and all of that, but um, mm -hmm. that's it. And, you know, with the licenses that you've shared here, that's the thing to know is how can I reuse this material? Like you said, so many people are, have already done and, and paved the way and, and created great things. So you just need to know how you are allowed to use that material yes. and then you don't need to reinvent anything, right? So that's true. Are there other questions or comments uh, for Sherry while we're here? You can feel free to unmute your mic or you can type in the chat as well. We did post a lot of links. Uh, Sherry was great to share many, many resources, and so those were all posted in the chat, but the recording and the slides will be made available on the website um, after the fact so that you can access all of that. Thank you, Erin. Thank you, Sherry. Thank you for being on the call, Todd. This is Kim Sherry. Great job. Thank you for sharing. Oh, my goodness. Aaron. No, this is Kim. I know. Dean oh. Kim, hello. How are you? Uh, I was just going to share with Aaron that my boss, my chair, Todd <laughs> Coral, was on the call to my surprise. Um, and uh, now my dean, Dean Kimberly. Yes, I've so, been in the beginning, so thank you. Uh, yes. So, But I'm glad it's being recorded. Apparently, there was a little bit of glitch in terms of people signing on. But thank you all for, for your support. Yeah, thank you very much for sharing with us today. Um, we do have more webinars uh, also actually throughout the day today and throughout the week during the lunchtime. Um, so we encourage you to explore other activities that are happening around the globe on the Open Education website as well. Um, our webinars were all posted there. That is an international site, so that's awesome um, that we can extend this to a larger audience as well. And we hope to see you at another virtual event soon. So Aaron, thank you again. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to, to share what I learned. More than welcome. Okay. All right. 